false positives. When you apply too many rules-based types of tests, you will get a lot of false positives, and it can be very frustrating, not only to the person running the analytics, but to their management who they're reporting it to, when they see, hey, you've shown me these 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 results of suspicious transactions. What am I going to do with it? I'm not going to go look at all these 10,000 transactions. That's not cost effective. Why are we even doing this program? What was the value? Let's pull the program, you know, and it's a failure. False positives can be very dangerous. And that was my, uh, a point that I would advocate is I'd rather have 20, 15 to 20 targeted tests based on a thought out risk assessment than 100 tests just to try to monitor and scan everything. Um, so that, you know, number one is false positives. Two is getting access to the data. Working with IT, who, if you appreciate, you've got to appreciate this, the pressures that IT is currently under in organizations. They are responsible and tasked with running the day-to-day -day transactional accounting information of that company. When you bring in your request to do a side project fraud examination, that's a, somewhat of a burden to them. And, you know, do you have the proper authorization? You know, who are you reporting to? Making sure that you have management buy-in. Those are important to make sure that that IT person can support you in getting the data that you need, which lead me, leads me to a very thorough and detailed and adequate data request memo. You need to talk in IT speak when asking for your data, because it can be very confusing if you say, well, I just, I need the data, when the IT person is going, well, how do you want the data? Do you want it in a pipe delimited, a comma delimited, tab delimited? Do you want a backup copy? All those types of things, you got to make sure you specify in your data request memo, because Garbage in, garbage out. And being able to normalize it and understand, you'll see archaic field names or, or field descriptions. I don't know what that is. And you can drive an IT person nuts trying to get explanations of, well, what does var character underscore 35 mean? Unless you have a data dictionary that describes what those fields are, um, you know, you'll constantly find yourself going back and frustrating that IT person. Um, Oh, there's a host of pitfalls, and I don't want to take up the whole <laughs> conversation. But really, data collection and normalization of that data is probably, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your challenges will be in the collection of the data and the normalization. The analysis is the fun part. But I would think 80% of the budget most times, um, or maybe 70, but a significant portion of your data analysis time and budget will be on the collection and the normalization of the data to get it clean such that you can analyze it. And the analyst, analysis goes rather quickly. Run it through the tools, the algorithms, refinement, reporting. Um, those, and, and that's really the fun part. Um, uh, but the pitfalls are really focus on the collection and the normalization of the data.